So for those of you that don't know, I was the girl that got assaulted in the viral video going around that happened in Nando's. Um, before I get into what actually happened, I'd like to thank everyone for all the kind messages and the support I've been receiving. And I'd also like to clarify why I'm making a video. This is probably going to be the first and last video I make on this. I'm someone who values my privacy. I don't think the situation would have garnered as much attention as it has, but the support's been overwhelming. So with all the attention that the video has gotten and seeing everything in the news about violence against women, violence against young women, violence against girls, I think it's important to speak up about what actually took place. Lastly, before explaining, I want to say what's more concerning than the man's behaviour was the failure of the Metropolitan Police and their conduct. I was grossly let down by them. They've reopened the investigation now, thanks to all of the support and the attention it's been receiving online, and for that I'm grateful. However, I was really disappointed and let down with what happened at the time with the police, which I'll get into. So the man's come in with the wife, I assume, and the baby, and they were sat down by a new colleague. The new colleague didn't give them a high chair, usually you're supposed to ask, but I think they assumed that they were just going to be given one anyway. That's when they got my attention because they were sat right behind me. My back was faced towards them. They got my attention. It was the lady initially, and she, and she already seemed irritated. Um, they asked me for the high chair. I started bringing it. Midway through me bringing it, I realised we're not allowed to put it in that area because that's where we run the food. We run the food back and forth in that area and that was my station for that day. So midway through me bringing it, I realised we're not allowed to put it there. I told them I'd double check with the supervisor, which I did. The supervisor said we're not allowed. So, so I relayed that information back to the couple. At this point, the man got quite aggressive with me. He started swearing at me, saying I'm wasting his effing time to sit him somewhere the F else then. At that point, I said I'd be happy to sit them in another section, but to just give me a second. At that point, he said, you're a little effing girl. Why the F do you work here? Sit me the some somewhere the F else. So it's then I said, let me get my manager involved because I didn't want to deal with that. So my manager's come now. The guy's still shouting, being aggressive, arguing. The manager has just sat him somewhere else with a baby chair. I asked why we're still serving him to the manager. I was ignored and that was that. Some time passes and we notice that t the table is clear now. No one's sitting there. We all just assumed they left the restaurant. The managers asked me where they've gone. I said, I don't know. We've all assumed they've left. I'm continuing to do my job and I get a thing on my screen to go to a specific table. It was a table in the corner of the restaurant to run their food. So as I'm going and on my way to give the food to this table, I notice that there's two police officers already in the restaurant waiting for their food. So I've gone to this table now and as I'm approaching this table, I notice that it's the couple with the baby. As I'm putting the food down, I asked them because they have moved basically without telling anyone, without informing anyone. Usually you're supposed to tell someone um, at Nando's. I, I place the food down and I ask, are you not using the high chair then? Because they've moved by themselves without taking the high chair. It's at that point the man has picked up the plate and whacked me on the side of my head with it. And there was cutlery on the plate too. I didn't register what just happened. I, re I remembered that the police were in the restaurant, so as you can see in the video that's when i said i'm going to the police i walk off and i go to one of the officers there were two officers present a male and a female officer i first go to the female officer and i said this man's hit me on the head with a plate sorry before that i just like to also add that at this point the wife is now chasing behind me calling me a fat b word and repeating that as she's chasing me with the officer now this man's just hit me on the head she didn't seem bothered, she said go speak to my colleague, which was the male officer sitting down waiting for his food. I go to him and I say, this man's assaulted me, he's hit me on the head with a plate. He said, who, this fella over here? And I said, yeah. He said, okay, and he takes the guy outside. And my manager takes me to the back office. Whilst I'm in the office, I can see from the CCTV screens that the police let the guy go. So the male officer who took him outside basically let him wander off without taking any of his details, without taking any statements, without checking the CCTV. And I could see on another screen that the female officer was having a laugh with the wife and playing with the baby. At this point, my managers have seen the CCTV. They agree that this man needs to be arrested and they, they ask for the police to come in to 
view the CCTV. The police have now viewed the CCTV. They've realised I made a mistake, but the male officer asked me what I wanted to do. I said I wanted to press charges. The officers are now telling me that I'm not allowed to press charges or that I can't press charges because I'd have to go in front of a jury of 12 to convince them that I was unprovokedly attacked. And apparently the man has told the police officer that I threatened to punch him in the face. As you can see in the video, he's about a six foot something man quite built. I'm just about five foot. I, it doesn't make sense. I point out to the officers that in the CCTV footage, you can see that at no point there was, there was, there was not enough time for me to have even threatened the man before I got assaulted, to which the officer replied, well, there's no audio attached to the CCTV, so you can't prove that. We go around in circles for about an hour or some, what felt like five hours, basically, of them telling me, what do I want to do? I said I want to press charges. They said I can't and gave me reasons as to why I couldn't, invalid reasons for my, I, I had. I filed a complaint against the officers a couple of days later. Their supervisor got back to me and basically said they're humans and they made a mistake at work the same way you can make a mistake at work. And the officer, the male officer called me back also and basically told me, well, I couldn't hear or understand what you were saying and that you didn't, you didn't tell me that he hit you on the head. Their supervisor also told me that these officers are very experienced and that due to the commotion and the busyness of the environment that maybe they didn't understand me. They also told me nothing could be done about the situation and that the case has to be closed. Since all of the attention it's gotten online, the police have now issued an apology to me and they've opened up an investigation again. The man still hasn't been found as of yet, but they're looking for him. I'd just like to say this it was just a part-time job for me. I'm a uni student and this was just supposed to be me being able to be financially independent. And it's just a shame that the safety in a workplace, especially for young women, isn't something that's promised and and that police being present also doesn't promise you safety. I again want to thank everyone for all the kind messages I've been receiving. The support has been overwhelming and it means a lot to me and I appreciate everything and I'm glad the case has been reopened again.